Hey guys and dolls, so I wanted to do a makeup look for you guys today using the new Gwen Stefani collection because now the whole thing's come out and it's so freaking awesome. I don't think I love it just because I love Gwen Stefani, but I'm not gonna lie, that's definitely a factor here. I also used the blushes from her new blush palette, which is so freaking gorgeous, you guys, OMG. I really had no idea how beautiful it was until I started applying it today and then I was like, oh yes. My lips are kind of abused, so don't mind like the like red ring around the mouth, but I actually swatched all the lipsticks today. So be sure to check out my review of all of the new products from the Gwen Stefani line. Um, another special product that I'm using in today's video is the new brushes from Royal and Langnickel. They came out with these a couple of months ago. They're called Moda and it's a line of all synthetic uh, makeup brushes and they have rubberized handles and they kind of feel like silky it's really cool like they have another line called uh revolution and those also have rubberized handles but those ones almost feel a little sticky um it's good for grip and all that but these ones have like a nice like silky smooth yet rubberized feel to them it's really kind of cool they're all synthetic so it's cruelty free so soft I mean like be I'm gonna put on some more highlight right now because I have problems but I just I love this brush line I'm really really excited about it, it comes in a whole bunch of different sets and kits and everything um, so I will have a link to that in the description bar below as well as a coupon code for 20% off with the code vintage 20 so let's go ahead and get started with this makeup look to get me started today I'm taking a ColourPop eyeshadow this is a matte finish and it's called Coppa feel it's really close to my natural skin tone you can see I've already put primer and my brows on and all that stuff but I'm using this as a base for all the other eyeshadows because it cancels out all of the redness and it also acts as a nice smooth base for the eyeshadows I'm putting on top. It's a little trick I've recently been using I really like. So now I'm taking a slightly deeper than my natural skin tone color. This is, oh geez, what is it? Better look in the palette and see what the name of the eyeshadow is. Um, this is Stark from the uh, Gwen Stefani eyeshadow palette. So I put that all over my crease in a really soft method with the end part of this brush which has a fluffy end. And then to deepen the crease I'm taking zone eyeshadow with the sort of smudger end and then I blended that back out with the fluffy end of the brush. This is a really useful brush and I'm going to use it again later for concealer and for, well you'll see. So moving on I'm getting like nervous now. I'm using a flat yet fluffy brush. This is also from Royal and Langnickel. This one is really cool. It's very similar to like a 217 and that it has that pinched ferrule, but it's also fluffy, but it's a bit flatter than a 217. I'm really, really digging this brush. It might be my, one of my favorites that I used and I'm using it to apply uh, a skimp eyeshadow. I also had to look in the palette for that one as well beautifully textured eyeshadow and I'm using that both on the lid and as my highlight color today so you have a nice you know overall balance it, it's really just about highlighting the brow bone and the you know the lid itself to make those come forward and then using darker colors very slightly darker colors to recede the crease uh, and then I got a little bit of my eyeliner on my chin which is cool so today I am using a liquid eyeliner to create that nice sharp cat eye, but I'm using a brush to apply it. This is also from Royal and Lang Nickel. This brush is actually their brow brush, and I did in fact use this brush to apply my brow products and then I wiped it off to do the eyeliner as well. I haven't used a brush to do eyeliner in a really long time, and I was so impressed. I don't know what it is. I know part of it is this brush, which also really impressed me when I was doing my eyebrows. I felt like it made everything really fast. Uh, but I really forgot how sharp and beautiful and thin you could get it when you're just using a brow brush. And I think it really depends on which brow brush you use. I like this one. I also like one from Delium Tools. So what I did is I went ahead and I, you know, I did the outline with the brow brush and then I came in with the liquid liner to fill it in, get it really close to the lash line because I do think that the liquid liner just straight up works best super close to the lash line, but it's not great at getting a smooth line. So then I came back and fixed it again with the angled brush. For foundation today, I'm starting out with the Hourglass Primer, which is my all-time favorite. It just makes everything look amazing. And I was going to be trying a new foundation, so I kind of wanted to go for an old faithful, old, you know, an old favorite to test something out. Because you know, you don't, you don't want to try like 16 different products together and then you don't know why something doesn't work out. So for my foundation today, I'm using the Makeup Forever Ultra HD. So this is a new formulation. I thought I would try it out you know they sent it to me I thought okay I'll give it a spin so they sent me the shade 250 and 
I think 210. So I mix the two together because one's a little too light and one's a little too deep. And you know me, I always gonna mix everything. So then to apply this today, I put a little bit of the Smashbox water primer on my brush just to lubricate everything and get it going. And I knew I was gonna need a lot of coverage, so I decided to use a brush to really get a maximum amount of coverage. So this is also from Royal and Langnickel. This is their buffer brush, and I adore this brush. It is so soft. And I just love the way that it looks. A lot of buffer brushes can be really dense and almost drag and pull on the skin. But this one's very silky and just sort of glides over. It's quite magical. So I put the foundation all over my skin, just generally, you know, in the areas where I think I'll need it. I usually do like the bottom half of my face and then switch to the top half of my face. Why? I don't know. It just feels right. So then I went back over and added a little more foundation, especially around my mouth area. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I looked like a kid who'd been like drinking fruit punch or something because I did a bunch of lipstick swatches the day I filmed this. So anyway, uh, then I take a little teeny tiny brush and all these brushes are synthetic, so they're great for using with creams. So I use them. I used that brush, not them, I used that brush around delicate areas like around my nose, around my eyebrows. A lot of times people will put like extra concealer on places like this where you don't necessarily need concealer, you just need a little bit more of a precise application of foundation. So speaking of concealer, I'm using the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye and I'm using the neutral medium shade which was surprising to me. And oh, this is the, the brush that I was talking about earlier that I was going to reuse. This brush is so useful for concealer, it might be my new favorite. So one side has this little smudgy end which I use to apply it you know really concentrated where I need it and then the other side has this fluffy end which makes it perfect for just blending it out so like look look what it does I'm so excited <laughs> I know I get excited with stupid things but it's great for just applying a little bit where you need it you're like oh, okay I need a little concealer there flip it over blend it out it's very convenient and I like that I have two of these because I can continue to use one for eyeshadow which I also loved it for, but I can use this little pink one as my you know, foundation one. And it's great that they come in different colors because that way I can differentiate and know exactly what's what. So then I'm putting on my highlight. This is the MAC Rose Radiance highlighting pen. This stuff is great at kind of canceling out that sallow tone I have on the outer edge of my face and just anywhere I need a little lift. So now I'm going to set my concealer with the Laura Mercier uh, Secret Brightening Powder. This stuff is awesome. It has little teeny teeny tiny light reflecting particles in it. It doesn't look shimmery, but it definitely brings a lot of light, which is part of why I can use that more medium tone of concealer. Ooh, okay, this part. <laughs> I don't know what got into me, but I thought, okay, I will go ahead and apply my, the rest of my powder with my Real Technique sponge, which I love, but I usually use it wet. And this was not wet, this was a dry sponge and it was just, it, no, it was bad, it was so bad. So then I decided to go ahead and just put my powder on and like blend it all out with the same brush that I applied my foundation with. You know, I applied a little tiny bit more powder with it but really it was just about blending out that over dramatic application of the powder that happened with the sponge that was not cute and just making sure everything looks nice. I really love this uh, Makeup Forever foundation, I really like the way that it turned out. So then for my lower lash line, I'm taking Anaheim, which is a grayish brown, and I'm using that same smudger brush that I used to define the crease earlier, that same brush I used for all my crease colors today. And I'm just smudging that on my lower lash line. This is gonna be sort of like a background singer for my, uh, you know, when I put my mascara on, it makes the lashes look a little more intense. And then I'm using a white eyeliner on my inner rim. You guys know I love the big, wide-eyed, bold eye look. <laughs> And Feathered from OCC is really perfect for this. It doesn't irritate my contacts. It's nice and white. Oh, okay, so I went to use my Clinique mascara that I only bought like a couple months ago, and I've only used it like once. So I was shocked when I opened it up and it smelled rancid. Like, has this ever happened to you? That That's bizarre that something could go from being, you know, I mean, I just bought it a couple months ago, and then it smelled completely rancid, and I had only used it one time. Bizarre. So... No matter, I just busted out the Stretch X mascara and used it. I used it on the bottom first, curled my top lashes, and then applied mascara to the top lashes. For my false lashes today, I'm using House. How I can't. I keep trying to say this. I keep having to re-record it. House of Lashes Pixie Lux lashes, as well as their lash glue. I'm going to be totally honest, their lash glue is not my favorite. I'm just kind of using it out because it's what I got. I bought the black one and I misplaced it and I'm very sad because I think that the black House of Lashes lash glue actually works better than the original. That's just my opinion. 
And now I am applying the lashes with my Japanese lash applicator device, which is fantastic. Love that. Uh, occasionally I still need to go in and like, you know, do work with my hands and, you know, make sure everything's in place. Applying false lashes isn't always perfect. And my eye was like weepy and creepy that day. So I was having issues. Don't mind me. So then for blush, I started out with lo-fi. I wanted to have that sort of peachy warmth added into the face. I thought it would go well with the crease colors that I'd used. And can we just have a moment to talk about the brow highlight that Skimp provides? Yes. So then I applied that and then over I used Easy from the palette, which is a little bolder than I had thought it was going to be. Like, do you see how, yeah, it was a little too much. So I was like, okay, let's call in that powder brush from earlier. Cool it down before you lose control. And then I took Angel as a highlighter. This is another Royal and Lane Nickel brush. There's one that looks similar to this brush that I used earlier. I used the highlighting glow brush actually to apply the powder under my eyes and then to apply my uh, my glowiness here, I'm using the contour brush. Just because a brush says it's for a specific purpose doesn't mean you have to use it for that purpose. And then I applied way too much highlight on my chin and I was like, oh, I'm looking dewy. Maybe a little too much. So then again, I picked up my powder brush and just squeezed a little powder on there. It's no big deal. It's all good. It's makeup. We can fix it. <laughs> And then for my lips, I started out with Rocksteady Lip Pencil from the Gwen Stefani Collection. I am so excited about these lippies. Have you seen my review yet? I'll go ahead and have a link for that in the description bar down below. I love this lip pencil. And for me, I have a lip scar. So I always start out with the right side of my lips, which for you is the left when you're watching this. Start out by lighting that out and getting an idea of the framework. And then I start to work on the left side because it's a bit trickier for me. So I almost... I almost do this like what I do when I'm applying lip pencil to someone else. I use a finger and sort of slightly pop out the lip line. It can help me to get that nice straight edge that you want, especially when you're doing something like red lips. I then go ahead and fill it in with the side of the pencil. And you're going to see me do this again on the bottom. Again, I start with the right side. I don't, I don't know why. Because my bottom lips, I mean, it's kind of the same. There's no scar or anything there to prevent me from getting a straight line. But eh, for continuity, whatever. So then again, I use the side of the lip pencil and this is really great for a couple reasons. For one, you, you cover more area when you use the side of the pencil. It's a little smoother to drag it across the lips and then also it sharpens your pencil for you. So you only have to sharpen it, you know, once every other use. If you're using your own personal, obviously if you're using it on other people, you need to sanitize and, you know, uh, sharpen in between. Then Rocksteady lipstick, isn't it gorgeous? Whenever I'm doing like a red lip, I always like to perfect the outer edge, especially in a time like today when I had all that red staining around my mouth, but it still bleeds through a little bit because I just had a lot of lip abuse that happened because in addition to all the Gwen Stefani lipsticks, I also swatched some other stuff. So anyway, I always like to go over that outer edge with a little bit of tinted face powder. Then of course I've got to take down all of my rollers, get, you know, a little, just a little bit of volume in my hair. I should probably do a, ro a roller tutorial soon. So let me know if you guys would be interested in that and I will make that happen for you. Um, I don't know. I just, it's something I do. It really gives my hair a nice, like finished, polished look. And then I was like, what is missing? I was actually kind of being a little cutesy pootsy about it. Forgive me. So <laughs> I forgot to fill in my little freckle thing. I love my freckle. Embrace what makes you different. And lately I've been filling it in with this color. This is natural taupe from Milani. Actually, I've been using this for years, but lately I've been thinking about filling it in even darker just to really kind of enhance it. It's something I've had since I was a kid. I was recently looking at like old family photos and stuff, and I'm like, dang, I've had that since I was like at least six. So it really is, you know, part of what makes me me. I gave my brows a nice little fill with the dirty blonde, which is actually very close to my natural brow color, which sort of helps to balance out the artificial brows I give myself. And then, sorry guys, I forgot to film an outro, so have a great day. Remember to be vintage or tacky, just be your own kind of beautiful. See you later. Bye.